If you've ever bought anything, you've probably spent hours watching countless YouTube videos and reading reviews. You do the same thing when you plan a vacation or make any decision, really. The problem is that not only does this take hours to do, but even after doing all this research, you're still left with a bunch of questions and no one to ask. Let me introduce you to one of the greatest tools that has completely changed everything I do. And it's free. This is Notebook LM. But is it yet another AI chatting tool? Let's find out. Well, firstly, and this is important, unlike many AI tools that use your data to train their system, Notebook does not. The only time a human gets involved is if you want to provide feedback or if you're having any issues. Otherwise, your data is your data. So what is this exactly and how does this solve a problem that other AI tools have? Instead of talking about it, let me show you five things that you can do right now with Notebook LM. Regardless if you're making a big purchase like a house or a small purchase like a phone, you want to make sure you're not being ripped off and you want to make sure that you're buying the right thing for you. So here is how this works. Right, after you've logged in, you're going to click the Create New. Now, this screen pops up. The first thing I want to do is close this down and not do anything with it because I want to be able to type in a title for my notebook. Well, this is basically where everything that's related to this topic is going to go. Now, you'll see these three sections. There's the Sources section, there's the Chat section, and then there's the Studio section. And we're going to go through each one of them. So let's click on add source. Now here is where my sources are going to go. And I have various options here. I could upload a source and this could be a PDF. It could be a text file. It could be a markdown file or an audio file like an MP3. I can also link it to my Google Drive and select Google Docs or Google Slides. I can also use a website link, a YouTube link, or I can paste my own text. So Let's start by going to websites. So this is about the best phone of 2024. I find a bunch of links online. I open up the link. I copy it. Go to add source and click on website. And I'm going to paste that URL in here and then click on insert. And then it starts to process it. Whilst it's processing, let's go find a bunch of other sources online. So let's look for another website. And here the best phone. Copy that. Uh, website, paste, insert. So just a rinse and repeat kind of process. Now, not only does it do text, but it actually can do YouTube videos as well. So let's find the video, go with ad source. And this time I'm going to select YouTube and I'm going to paste that link in here and click on insert. And let's do that a bunch more times. I want to build up a source list. I want to have a whole bunch of YouTube videos and a whole bunch of articles. So I've got a lot of sources that this is going to work with. And I've got about, what, five sources here ready to roll, and that's good enough for us to get started. We're going to ignore the chat now. The first thing we're going to do is go to the right side and click on Briefing Document and let that process. And very quickly, it creates a document. And if we open up that document, this is essentially a detailed briefing, taking all the sources into account and giving me all the overall themes, the phones by category. And the idea here is that I can very quickly learn what I need to learn. I can also click this button to convert this to a source and which adds it to my source list. So instead of having five sources, I now have six. So it's got more things to query. Now I am ready to start typing. And you can see it already pre-populates it with some questions that it thinks it's important and we should ask. And you can scroll through those questions. Now let's click one of the questions and let's go through the response. And it's important to note that it actually gets this information only from the sources that you've actually uploaded. And it gives you a nice reference. So in case you do find something that you want to deeper dive into, you can do that. You can save this as a note so you can come back to it later. You can copy it. Now you can obviously continue down this rabbit hole by asking more and more personalized questions until you get the answers that you need in order to make the right buying decision. So for you, battery and camera might be important. Somebody else, it might be a financial thing. So it's going to be something that's under a certain price point. You just dive and dive deeper and deeper. Now, speaking of diving deep, look at this button, deep dive conversation. You can generate or you can customize. Watch this. This is just insane. 
I am going to basically give this instruction that says, hey, focus on which phone offers the best value without breaking my bank. The main concerns are the battery life and a good camera, as an example. And I want them to focus on that. And I'm going to click on generate. Now, this does take a little while, so let's come back to this. Okay, whilst this is still processing, have you heard about AI hallucinations? This is when an AI model generates responses that contain false or misleading information. So when you ask an AI tool about a phone's battery life, as an example, it doesn't have any real world knowledge and it certainly doesn't have any hands-on experience with it. So it looks at the battery stats and makes assumptions that can be misleading. It will tell you things like, this phone's battery lasts four days without charging. Uh, the last time that happened was with the Nokia 3210. So unless we're talking about that phone, that's probably not correct. And it's not because the AI is stupid. This happens because the AI doesn't have enough training data or has biased data in the training data that it does have. It's like asking your mate who only has ever bought an iPhone and then you ask them, should you get an Android phone? What do you think they're likely to say? With Notebook LM, you don't have this issue because you get to decide what the source of the data is. Now, of course, if you only pick sources about how bad Android phones are and then you ask it, should you buy an Android phone? Well, you're not gonna get the right answer either, duh. So, as you saw, I used varied sources about the best smartphones from written to YouTubers who've had real world experiences with these devices before they gave their opinion. And it doesn't just have to be about phones. It could be with anything big like buying a house. You can feed it the housing trends in an area, feed it the crime reports from the police for that area, feed it articles from various sources and then ask it questions to be able to make a decision if this is a good area for you to buy in. And that is pretty darn awesome. Um, I see the audio is still processing. So in the meantime, let's talk about the next thing. It's easy to make travel plans to a place that you've been or have some knowledge of, but it's not so simple when you want to explore a new country or a new location altogether. Where do you even start? You know the airport that you're gonna land in, but then what? And yes, of course, you hit the web, you do your searches, watch a bunch of travel videos, and things sound great. But now, you've got a million questions. How many hours drive is it between cities? Is there things to do that are fun for adults and not boring for kids? Which hotel should you stay in? Well, that recommended restaurant sounds great, but I'm traveling with someone who's vegan. Do they have any options? So essentially what you got now is more homework, more tabs to be opened, and more searches to do. If you've ever planned a road trip for your family, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, this is where Notebook LM has been an absolute pleasure. Right, let's create a new notebook and this time we're going to call it travel plans. And what we want to do is we want to go find a whole bunch of sources. So this time I'm going to start with some YouTube videos. Here is one, right click, copy link address, and then open up my notebook, add sources at the bottom, YouTube, right click, paste, insert. Now we don't have to watch it process, we can go ahead and repeat this process a bunch of times so that we're building up our source list, we always have a lot of data to go through. Now I always suggest not just sticking to one platform like just YouTube, always go for written as well, find an article, right click on it, copy the address, add to the source, choose website, paste the URL and then insert. And again, we don't want one article, we want a bunch of them. So let's rinse and repeat that process. Now, it's important, sometimes you may see this red square, which basically means you cannot use that as a source. There may be copyright issues with it or some other issues that doesn't allow us to be inserted. So click on the three little dots, click remove source and press delete. Okay, now this is pretty cool, watch this. You go to the notes and you click on add note. Now, you can type anything in here. So in this case, I'm gonna type up information about the people who are actually part of this travel plan. 
It's to adults. It's kids. The kids don't like a certain type of food. They do like other type of food. We've also got some allergies, so no shellfish. Then give it note a title, so travelers, if I could spell travelers right, and then I can convert that to a source. So now this becomes part of my sources and this is where this is so powerful because all the answers that it's going to give me is going to be related to that traveler's note that I've put in there so I know I'm going to get the right information that's very unique to me. So as I am building up my question and I'm asking it to create my travel plan but hold on a second I've just realized that in my traveler's note I didn't put what we like and what we don't like. So open up the traveler's note and make a new little section and I'm going to call it interest. And in my interest, I'm going to put in the things that we're interested in doing. So historical sites, maybe I want to see some of the local tourist attractions. Um, I want to see some must-see spots and I can tell you what I don't want to see. I don't like hiking, so don't give me hiking trails. Now, here's important. When I convert this to a source, it actually creates a secondary source. It doesn't update the original. So you have to go and remove the original source so that you're only left with the ones that has the updated information. Okay, now that we've got that done, I can continue my question. So let's see what it's going to generate as an itinerary for my little trip. Now, sometimes it's pretty quick. Sometimes it takes a bit of time depending on the number of sources that you have and how long each source is. So now it's got my whole trip laid out and I can see it's broken up day by day. It's telling me where to go. It's taking into account the things that I told it to take into account. Like we told her we like pizza. So it found a place called Mystic Pizza and there's a little reference as well. So I know where it got that information from. Each day is also broken down by categories. So travel time, we have activities, we have the food, we have the hotels. And if I scroll down to the bottom, I can click on the save to notes. And now that's going to be there for me to come back to and reference whenever I need to. I can also click on the timeline. Now this is pretty cool. Click on the timeline. And now not only is it broken down with the information, but it's broken down in morning, afternoon, evening, nighttime, day by day based on the activities of that day. Of course, you can keep refining it and the more details that you have about your family as a source document, the better the results are going to be. And now it's not so difficult being the family's travel agent. A friend freaked me out. He introduced me to this guy, Anik Singal or Singal, who was actually sued by the FTC for millions of dollars for not having his business compliant with the FTC regulations. Uh, I don't have hours to spend listening to podcasts and reading interviews just to work out what I need to do to not land up in the same situation. So thankfully, I've got Notebook LM. Right, let's create a new notebook called Business Research and you know the drill by now, we're adding a whole bunch of links from various sources that we find all over the web. And once I got it, well, the first thing I like to do is click on that briefing doc. Once I have that briefing doc, then I'm able to understand very, very quickly what are the issues at stake here? What are we talking about? Now, this whole thing seems to be around this thing called FTC compliance. Well, I don't know what that is. So let's ask away what is ftc compliance i want it to create a full-on plan outline what i need to do practically make it super simple no technical terms so that anybody can understand and i have a step by step guide which you've got to admit is better than sitting through a one hour and 31 minute interview now, if you really want to get the load on, then of course, you're going to go sit through that one hour and 31 minutes. But there's no point in sitting through an entire interview if it doesn't really apply to you. So this just saves you all that headache. And uh, speaking of headaches, let's create a new notebook called Meetings. And this time, my sources are going to be MP3 files, audio files that I've recorded from my Zoom, from my meetings with my clients. And this time, I am not going to use external sources because I just wanted to query the notes from my meetings. Now, of course, we start with the briefing doc because that's a great overview of what actually was discussed. And what I like to do is say, look, are there any action items that I need to do? And it just figures out the action items and I have a to-do list. Now, you can add voice notes from your phone if you're one of those people who likes to record your thoughts or if you want to know what the key information is from a 
lecture or a keynote presentations you attended. Simply upload the audio files, get your briefing docs and ask your questions. This one is a cool little trick that I've only recently started doing after I couldn't figure out how to do something on one of my cameras. Okay, new notebook called Manuals, and into the Manuals notebook, I'm dragging, well, uh, PDF manuals of all the various gadgets and devices I have around my house. And now I'm gonna ask it some questions. I'm gonna untick the ones that it doesn't apply to, so that when I ask the questions, it knows exactly where to go and get the information. The manuals are really not hard to come by electronically, just usually on the manufacturer's website, they should have the manual in a PDF, download, grab them, upload it, and build your little manual library. Ah, wait, hold on, I see that the audio is now done, so let's hear what Notebook LM has to say about which find we should buy. Okay, let's see what it's got. All right, so we're diving into the world of smartphones today. You know, trying to find the best phone that won't completely drain your bank account. And especially with the focus on battery life and camera quality. Sounds like a pretty common concern these days. It really is, yeah. But the good news is that you don't have to sacrifice quality for affordability anymore. There are some really great options out there. Okay, so that's what we're going to uncover today. We've got a ton of reviews, comparisons, all those expert opinions to help us help you navigate this decision. But mm -hmm. uh, first things first, battery life. I mean, you want a phone that can keep up with you, right? That's kind of the whole point. Exactly, I mean, yeah. that's ridiculous. Okay, but you can do a bunch of things. You can change the playback, you can download, you can delete, and you can actually share your little podcast. So click on the share button. You want to make it public access, you can do that. Let's click on the preview so you can see what it looks like. And it creates this little website, a new page, and you can copy the link and then share it with anyone. I'm sorry, how good is that audio? It's like two people are actually creating a podcast just for you and only about the topic that you actually want to hear. Im imagine sending this to your client or to your team, or if you have a website and you have a whole bunch of articles on it, imagine having a little podcast created for each of the articles. It's just such a cool way to consume information. I like using Notebook LM for things like medical reports, uh, business financial statements, legal contracts, retirement investment docs, things that have got lots of jargon, lots of technicalities that I don't personally understand. Now, it's never going to replace a trained professional, to be clear, but it does allow you to understand it more in your own way so that you can actually ask smarter and better questions when you do meet with your financial advisor, your doctor or your attorney. We're only seeing the beginning of the power of AI and its abilities to compute and analyze data like we could never before. And yes, there are those who are old school digging in their heels and don't trust AI and think that it's evil. And yet AI is in most things that we use today, like our phones and social media. And then there are those who use AI for what it is, a tool to make us smarter. And I know some people will disagree with that. I would love to know your thoughts down in the comments. Do you think AI is ruining our society since it's in everything? Or do you see the benefit of AI? Let me know. And did you know that AI can now be built into computers so you don't even need an internet connection? Check this out right over here. Before you head out, don't forget to give this video a quick thumbs up if you like this video. And I'm gonna see you over here. Let's go.